All right, we got our BMR motor mounts in. Okay, so something I wanted to mention real quick. There's a certain way that these go in. This hole is not centered. This hole is more towards this part. So the short end should be on the bottom. Um, this flat side, this flat-ish side goes down. This hump side goes to the top. So on the passenger side, that tang would be in the back. On the driver's side, that tang would be in the front. And if you ever rebuild the poly mounts in these, keep that in mind too, that that's not centered. That goes more towards the bottom. So make sure that you put that hole more towards this flattish side, not this side that, that sticks out. So the same thing with the BMR ones. See, that hole's, it's more visible on this. For some reason, there's a, an illusion there that that almost looks centered, but it's not. It's closer towards the bottom, which this is the bottom of the motor mount. My pinky is the top. And just like this one, these go on so you can see the BMR. And you can clearly see on these for some reason, you can see it better that this hole is closer to the bottom. So, that one's going to go in just like that right there. And look, there's a lot of wiggle room there. Oh, odd. There ain't no wiggle room on that one. Well, there's a little, not much. There's quite a bit of wiggle room on that one. But when we put these in, we're going to leave these bolts loose, leave these bolts loose. We're going to put this in. We're going to leave these bolts loose. And then we're going to try to line it all up. But I'm going to go ahead and see how good the bolt sticks in there. So oddly enough, even though I had that real tight, that hole's a lot bigger. It almost seems like it danced around and I don't know, I had it tight. Either way. There's a little gap there, not much. But uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and I'm going to put this side in first. And just put the bolt holes in nice and loose and then put these bolt holes in and leave them nice and loose. And then we'll go ahead and put the other side in. The same thing, we'll leave the bolts loose and then we'll lower the motor up and down, see if we can't get everything lined up. And once we get it lined up, we'll stab it in. Now I got the motor mounts in. All the bolts are loose on this side, all of them. And then that one, the mount on the K-member side is loose. But not loose. But the motor mount on the motor is loose, and I didn't get the bottom two bolts in it because the motor mount's in the way, so I'm going to lower that to put the bolts in there. But let's lower it down and see how things line up. Well, check it out. I come out here during lunch break. All the bolts are loose, but all the bolts and nuts are in. That didn't take me 20 minutes. I did that on my lunch break. But you know I did already have it out. But after lunch, we'll come out here and we'll tighten everything up. We'll be good to go. Solid motor mounts. Woo woo. Alright, it's after work. I'm gonna come out here and tighten these bolts up. So I put that bolt in first and it was off a little. What I did was I stuck a pry bar. Pry bar. Sorry, Ben. <laughs> Stuck a pry bar through here and up on the side of the motor and just pushed it and it slid the motor over a little bit and got that bolt in. So you will have to do some lifting up and down on the jack and prying back and forth on the motor. And uh, that bolt went right in. So, <clears throat> so the wrench size for these are 15 millimeter. Well, those are anyway. I'm going to go ahead and tighten those on both sides. For the mount that goes on the motor side then we'll go ahead and tighten these and then we'll tighten up the uh, main bolt that goes through there all right everything's tightened up on both sides sometimes you got a ground wire over here somewhere <coughs> don't make sure make sure to put that back on so now we'll go ahead and put the uh exhaust back on and then um, I'm gonna loosen this exhaust 
and spin it up some because it was they weren't even. I mean they're not even anyway, but at least you can get it remotely close. And then I use JB Weld. That ain't gonna leak at all. That ain't gonna come off there like that Permatex did. That stuff ain't going nowhere. So yeah, throw that back up in there. Alright, the exhaust is back in. What do you need to tighten that up? Because I forgot to bring my crescent wrench down here with me. And uh I loosened this one up and pushed it up some. Hopefully that hit in the fender there won't burn a hole in it. I don't think this part gets too hot because, I mean, it's pretty free-flowing exhaust. So, usually the restrictions what gives it a lot of heat. But we'll keep an eye on that and see. If not, we'll lose some and lower them down. But, yeah, exhaust is in. Next up, so I already put the starter in. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. I didn't even take the wires off the starter. I just let it hang on the power wire. I did remove the battery cable. I definitely want to do that when you're messing with the starter. Because that power wire on the back grounds out on anything. And you're going to have a spark show. Alright, let's put the alternator back in. And on this alternator, there's just one bolt here and one bolt here. For that whole bracket and the alternator. That's just the way this works. It's got the ICT billet or whatever pulley on it. Yep, and I had to actually drill that hole. If you watched any of my other videos, I had to drill that hole to make this setup work. I wish I had power steering, but eh, whatever. I might add power steering one day. Back to it. Because that is one thing I do miss, is the power steering. <laughs> uh, anyway, let's put the air back on. Alright, the arm air is back on again. With this set up, it's just that bolt right there that I had to drill to get this to work. And then this bolt right here. Now, let's put the alternator wires on. There's a, use a 13 millimeter wrench with that and then we need to plug the other wire in. All right, and the battery wire for the alternator is on. Right there, that's 10 millimeter. I think I accidentally said 13 millimeter a while ago. Then the plug-in's right there. Got your ground wire running around like that. Try to keep everything away from the exhaust. So there's, I know it don't look like much there, but there's more room than that. It's just the angle. And then uh, I put the belt back on, and that's a 15 millimeter wrench on the pulley there. Tighten the pulley. Go like you're tightening it up. I put slack in it, and yeah. Belt goes on just like so. Alright. Oh no. It's over the top of the bolt. That was over the top of the bolt there. Alright. The thing we didn't start her up by gap and I shredded the belt. <laughs> but uh yeah, looks like everything's lined up like it should. Alright. That's it. I feel like I'm missing something because that went way faster than I thought it would. I mean, I didn't work on it. I mean, all in all, putting the mounts in and everything probably didn't take me 40 minutes. Putting the starter back on, putting the alternator back on, putting the exhaust back on, straightening the exhaust on this side a little, try to get it to match the other side a little bit. Huh. Now... Now I just need a resistor for the uh, for the key because my vats is acting up. That's it, you guys. Like and subscribe. And hopefully we can get this thing tuned. Maybe get it to the drag strip this week. If we do get it to the drag strip this weekend coming, I'm just going to run it on motor more than likely. I might spray it. Who knows? But, uh, Y'all throw down in the comments what you think it'll run. This, with me in it, this car weighs about 3,550 pounds. And it's just a stock 5.3 with a, with a BTR Stage 2 turbo cam with the sporting mods like the springs and stuff like that. But yeah, hit the comments tell me what you think it's going to run.
and a quarter on motor.